There was a lot of feedback I got in my Muhammad Ali versus Rocky Marciano computer super fight video that I thought uh, would be interesting to address, uh, specifically the more controversial elements of Marciano's career that so many people like to find fault with. Uh, one is the fact that he only fought old men. Well, in looking at his record, the old men he did fight, uh, namely Jersey Joe Walcott, Ezra Charles, and Archie Moore, all earned their right to fight Marciano, so their relatively old ages are inconsequential. Charles was in a decline, but it wasn't a precipitous one. Uh, Walcott peaked late in his career, while Archie Moore was, was Old Man River. He was still th uh, three years away from his legendary battle against uh, Yvonne Durrell, where he was defending his light heavyweight title. And uh, he was competitive against Floyd Patterson. So, uh, you know, these were monsters of the time period. They were all great fighters, and Marciano has to be given credit for not only beating, but stopping each member of this murderer's row who just happened to not be spring chickens. They were all great fighters. Now, another argument that I, I saw over and over again was that uh, Marciano ducked numerous fighters over the course of his title reign, uh, namely that he ducked Nino Valdez. Well, Nino Valdez would have been dangerous. Uh, he was a huge guy, you know, especially for that time period, and uh, he could punch like hell. Uh, he was the number one contender for about uh, a year uh, during uh, Marciano's reign, but he lost in a, in a title elimination bout to Archie Moore. So Rocky didn't avoid Valdez. Had Valdez defeated Moore, he would have gotten his shot. Uh, the untimely loss to Moore pretty much sums up Valdez's career as he lost five times during uh, Marciano's title reign and his number one ranking was based solely over his wins over Ezra Charles and uh, his knockout over Hurricane Jackson. So in looking at the roster of uh, heavyweight contenders during Marciano's uh, title reign, uh, I'm hard pressed to find anyone that he blatantly avoided. Uh, Floyd Patterson was still on the come up and was campaigning as a light heavyweight. Uh, fighters like Azora Foley, Eddie Machin, and Cleveland Williams, they were not on the radar yet. They were out of the public eye. And in 1954, Sonny Liston was still struggling with the likes of uh, Johnny Summerlin and Marty Marshall, who broke his jaw. He was not on the radar yet, and uh, I think he was only a year into his pro career. So there really wasn't a heavyweight on the come up that one can point to and say Marciano was avoiding this fighter. However, there were two proposed fights that never took place that are worth noting. Um, one is a prospective fight with Earl Walls, a power puncher out of Canada that was peaking during the mid-1950s, but his career never took off in the way that perhaps it should have uh, because he wasn't connected, and um, we'll get to that later. Uh, nicknamed the Hooded Terror, Walls defeated Rex Lane and Jimmy Slade, but the word is that he lost his desire in the sport when he failed to land a big money fight with Marciano. And if there's a case to be made for someone who should have received a title shot during the time period of 1954 and 1955, it would be Bob Baker. Uh, Bob Baker was on a 13 fight win streak during this time. And like Earl Walls, uh, he defeated uh, Rex Lane and Jimmy Slade. And he also defeated Nino Valdez. But his brittle hands limited his effectiveness and his career went downhill after Marciano retired. So Marciano never avoided any heavyweight juggernaut during his career, but perhaps Bob Baker should have received a title shot, but you know, he was one of those fighters that just slipped through the cracks as this was you know, a time period where there were, where there were not splintered titles the way they are now.
Now, the only legal trouble Rocky did have was with the IRS uh, when it was discovered that he was investing large sums of money into a loan sharking business run by Pete DeGravio in Cleveland. Problem was, the two never had anything in writing, and Marciano was fingered by DeGravio after he was being investigated by the IRS himself. Uh, ultimately, no charges were filed against Marciano. And now another and more interesting narrative is that Marciano not only had ties to the mafia, but that he was mob controlled. Now the definition of the phrase mob controlled can be applied to fighters like Johnny Saxton and Art Aragon, where there is verifiable proof that the officials were paid off and or their opponents had taken dives in their fights. You know, the most famous example of a mob's control in the sport was uh, Jake LaMotta's admission that he was paid anywhere from $20,000 to $100,000, depending on uh, what uh, news article you read, for taking a dive against uh, Billy Fox in 1947 in order to get his shot at the middleweight crown. This is a pretty rough crowd, isn't it, Mr. LaMotta? What is this? These people engaged in this uh, boxing business? I'm not afraid of none of them rats. You're not afraid of any of them? No, sir. LaMotta? I believe you have stated before the subcommittee that you got the okay to go into the tank, as they say in boxing, to Fox on the last day before the fight. Is that correct? Yes. I, uh, I uh, said I would lose to Billy Fox if I if I was guaranteed a championship fight. And on the flip side, there were mob-controlled fighters like Ike Williams, who were frozen out of the limelight because of their mafia connections. Now, I don't see any evidence that Marciano was mob-controlled if we're applying the same criteria as we're doing to uh, LaMotta and Johnny Saxton. Some critics cite his first fight with a Ted Lowry as a bout that was fixed, but by all newspaper reports, and there the only consensus was that it was a close fight. There was no consensus that it was a highway robbery that should have been judged in Lowry's favor. Um, it is written that Lowry hurt Marciano and it appeared to um, back off. Then there's, you know, there's no evidence that Lowry was approached by the mob to take it easy on Marciano. Now there is one biographer who describes how Marciano was once asked to take a dive against Don Cockle in 1955 with the deal that the two would later fight for real in a rematch, uh, Marciano refused and knocked out Cockle in the ninth round. What is undeniable is that Marciano may not have been mob controlled in the definitions that uh, we apply to Saxton or Aragon and the rest, but he undoubtedly was friendly with Mafia Dons. Uh, he did hang out with a uh, Godfathers like uh, Raymond Pat Patriarca, Carlo Gambino, and Frank Costello. Uh, he was taken to restaurants by these men and was given tailored clothing. And he also visited the likes of uh, Vito Genovese in prison. It is reported that Marciano did befriend a mobster named uh, Milwaukee Phil, uh, Felix Alderizio, who saw a kind of naivete in Marciano and wanted him to be kept clean of any taint from the mafia. So that is where Marciano's manager, All Wild, steps in, as he was the front man for boxing promoter and mobster Frankie Carbo. Now, Carbo owned Madison Square Garden and the IBC, the, which was called the, um, short for the International Boxing Club, and he was the most powerful man in boxing during the time period of the 1940s and 50s. Uh, if you wanted a title shot, Carbo had to have a piece of you, and numerous fighters were frozen out of the title picture because they were not Carbo fighters. Now, manager Al Wild didn't approve any of Marciano's opponents without a benediction from Carbo. So we can read between the lines there. You know, Al Wild was to Frankie Carbo what Carl King was to Don King, simply a manager in name only who protects the real man running things behind the curtain. Now, who actually owned what percentage of Marciano is really open to speculation as mobsters obviously uh, avoid detection by their ability to hide behind the scenes. In Carbo's case, and using shell organizations with names like the IBC and his front man, but, uh, like people like Al Weil. Now that being said, uh, there isn't any evidence of suspicious activity 
in any of Marciano's fight footage. Uh, his mob connections are all inconsequential to his in-the-ring achievements. You know, we see the determination, the power, the blood, and the knockouts are all obviously very real. And his mob connections uh, do not tarnish his legacy. So I hope you enjoyed this discussion. Uh, please like or subscribe below, and I'll see you in the next video.